So, the question of the day. You've got all your basics covered. You got your food, water, emergency supplies, everything else. You gotta evacuate because of whatever. And what about all my personal information that's on my computer or, you know, all my paperwork, my files in my filing cabinet or, you know, in a box in the closet, you know? What do I do with all that kind of stuff? I need some of this stuff. We're gonna cover that next because there's more to prepping than just food, water, and supplies. Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And on today's video, we're going to be talking about your personal information and how you need to store it in case of emergency. So you're not fumbling around and looking for something and you can grab and go. So on that note, what we're going to do is we're going to start right here with the fire box. Now that you can get these fire boxes at any store, online, anywhere, they come in a wide a range of sizes, shapes, whatever you would like. They have these that look like this. They have tall ones that look like a safe, um, the whole nine yards. <clears throat> now these are great. I mean, they're waterproof, uh, fireproof. I store a lot of my paperwork and stuff and I've had this thing for over 20 years. Uh, we've had to evacuate and everything else before. You kind of just grab it by the handle and out the door you go. Now, the bigger they get, the heavier they get. Because this thing empty is probably, you know, 15, 15 pounds, you know. <clears throat> now you're asking yourself, well, you know, what about a safe deposit box? I have a safe deposit box. Okay, well, you know, safe deposit boxes are, are great. I mean, I do have a safe deposit box, um, but I store different things in there. Things that I don't need right on a, say, a moment's notice, because if something happens, and say you get a bad storm or whatever, and next thing you know, power's out, they can't open up the bank, and there's no power, they can't open up the safe either. So it doesn't matter if they can let you in or not, you're not getting in the safe. So I would store you know, things that you're not gonna need right at your fingertips right now in a safe deposit box. Now that being said, you know, I wouldn't store your emergency, say, cash or something like that in your safe deposit box. I would store that in something like your firebox in your home. Now, a lot of people out there do have, say, like gun safes. If you are a gun collector or you own guns, more than likely you have a safe that you keep them in. All right. So I do know a lot of people that keep all their important papers and any, anything and everything in that safe because you're not going to walk in like with this grab it by a handle and walk out with it Some of these gun safes, you know go four or five hundred pounds Depending on the size of them and it's going to take more than one person to get that sucker out of there So you don't have to worry about somebody just grabbing it and walking out the front door if you get what I'm saying You know whereas in this, you know, you got to keep it try to keep it hid somewhere in your house um you know, you have to really think about it and find a good hiding spot, but you also want to make sure that it's good and ready to go uh, on a moment's notice in case you have to evacuate and you have to leave like yesterday. So let's move on down the line. You can go on Amazon and you can pick these up. These are waterproof bags, all right? Now what I did was, is when you order these, you get a whole bunch of them. They come in a big pack, and I'll put a link to these in the description below so that you guys can check them out. And um, I took, and if you go back and watch my video on, on my first aid kit that I did, I used a lot of these for a lot of my first aid products in my first aid kit. Because the first aid backpack that I did buy is not 100% waterproof. It's water resistant, but not waterproof. So I put a lot of this stuff into these bags which are waterproof and put them inside the water resistant bag. And this way here, my emergency supplies, as far as my big first aid kit are good to go. 
Now you can do the same with your paperwork, with, fo with photos, um, with anything. You know, you can put them in here, you zip them up, seal them, and they're good. Now, if it's a fire, that ain't gonna last. But if it's water, you're good to go. Let's move on down the line. All right, everybody's probably heard of a flash drive, you know? These little flash drives, I mean, you can pick them up nowadays for, you know, a dime a dozen, all right? Now, this one here is a, this little dinky thing is a 64 gigabyte little flash drive. You can store quite a bit of information on this little thing. And the beauty of this is it'll fit right in your pocket. You can slide it into your boot. You can uh, put it in your sock, um, whatever. But it's so small, if push comes to shove, you can hide this little thing from people if you have all your information and everything backed up from your computer system. It's USB, you just plug it right in and download away. Just copy everything right over to this and you know store it somewhere where you know where it is and you can grab it and out the door. <clears throat> now going back a little bit farther back, you know, old school, these little scan discs. You know, these used to go to like uh, uh, a lot of older cameras and those type of things. This is a 32 gigabyte. Uh, you can, I can back up on my computer. I bought an adapter where I can plug all these different size because I have, I have some old camera film that's stored on a lot of these. So I had to buy, when I got the new computer, <clears throat> it doesn't have these slots in it because we're going old school. <laughs> So I had to buy the adapter that I can plug into the USB port that you can plug all these different t sizes, little scan disks into, and then you can read it off that and load them back onto the computer. And basically what I've been doing um, is I've done that and loaded them in the computer, and then we go to the external hard drive here, which is a one terabyte, and I back everything up onto here now. So this is so small, it's compact, um, it'll fit in a shirt pocket, boom, gone, see you later, bye. And everything is on this. Now I'm a big music person, okay? I love my music, I like all types of music, all right? So I've downloaded um, a lot of my CDs I put onto the computer, so I have music on my computer. And then I take, and what I did was, because the computer that I just bought is only a 500 gig computer, whereas this is a one terabyte. See where I'm going with this? So <clears throat> this cost me 119. And um, I backed up, I don't know, I probably got about 100 albums on my computer. Well, it used to be on my computer. They're all on here now with all my personal information and files and everything else and pictures and, you know, the whole routine. And I haven't even used quite half this thing yet. And there's a lot of stuff on here. So the moral of the story here is, you know, you got to make sure, you know, when you're doing your prepping and, you know, you're putting it together, your first aid supplies, your emergency food kits, um, you're storing all your, you know, your dry goods and everything else. And you're doing all this kind of stuff. Don't forget about some of the important stuff that you may have to think about, you know. Um, a little flash drive goes a long way, and nowadays, you know, you can pick these things up dirt cheap, you know. Um, <clears throat> I would suggest, you know, just going with a external hard drive because you get so much space, you know. I mean, this is 64 gigs, and this is one terabyte. So, you know, that's a lot of these. I'm not really going to do the math, but there's a lot of them. You know, you can also get you a firebox if you have a lot of regular paperwork. If you have maybe some old pictures or something that you don't want anything to happen to, you can put them right inside this firebox right here. You know, and you can grab this and you can go. I would use your safe deposit box as a last resort. Unless maybe say you had like old pictures or something like that and you want to keep some of that stuff in there. Or, you know, um, anything from that's been passed down from generation to generation in your family or something like that. You know, stuff like that, the stuff that you're not gonna need to use in a moment's notice in a time of emergency. That's what you put in your safe deposit box. So, this has been Survival Preparedness for Beginners. I hope this opened up everybody's eyes to what else is that you need to prep for. 
you know it does take time to back up a lot of your files and stuff and you, you have to put a little bit of time into that you have to decide what you want to put on there and what you don't want to put on there some people they just back up their whole system and put it right onto one of these you know which you could do you know but I wanted to bring a little bit of a, you know an eye-opener to there's more to this than the food the water um, emergency supplies and everything else you know what about everything else that you have you know because a lot of people nowadays you have pictures and everything else and you store all those right on your computer so you know I mean you take them off your phone you download them to your computer because you know your phone is only so big you know you don't have so much space and you don't want to delete them so you take and download them to your computer and you don't want to lose those either so you need to back them up on something this way here if you have to go you have everything with you and if say if it's a hurricane and you lose everything when you come back well at least if the computer's gone and it's in a neighbor's second floor uh, you have everything right here in your hand so this is survival preparedness for beginners and until next time I'll catch all you on the flip side.